Another theorem dealing with variables with expectation values that are going to be useful later. Here we wish to show that with equation 3.73, which is the Aaron Fest generalized theorem, we wish to show that d by dt of the product at x and p, position and momentum, is equal to 2 times the expectation value of kinetic energy minus x dv dx, the partial of course. Here t is the kinetic energy. Remember Hamiltonian is the kinetic plus the potential. Um, so in this station, and then what we want to know is in a stationary state, the left hand side is zero. Why? And if that's the case, then we see we get a uh, Virel's theorem, which is two times the kinetic energy expectation is equal to x dv dx. Use it to prove that the expectation of T and V for stationary states of the harmonic oscillator. Which, if you recall back in chapter 2, this kind of happened a lot that we saw kinetic and potential terms being equal uh, as far as their contribution. So, pretty cool to see that come back. But nonetheless, let's dive in. So if we start from the generalized Aaron Fest theorem, which is the time derivative of some observable Q is equal to I over H bar, the expectation value of the commutator relation of the Hamiltonian with the observable plus the uh, time derivative with the expectation of the time derivative of the observable. If you recall in the section that this is almost never a thing, so we could get rid of that to zero. Um, and, so when, and so for us in particular, since our variables of interest are x and p, we can get rid of that expectation value, which we see here. Really no big deal. Uh, I think the only example they gave us was uh, another oscillator. Um, but check the notes for that. It's pretty useful. Uh, nonetheless, though, what we see migrating down is that we still have to evaluate what is this expectation or the expectation of this commutator relation here. And so, you know, once we have that, we see that once we plug in X and P, we have to distribute it. So if you recall the commutator right-hand distribution property, we have, you know, this form that we need to match. So we have P on the inside and X on the inside. And now we're just left with two commutators of X of H and X and H and P respectively. And conveniently, we already solved for these quantities before. In particular, in problem 3.15, we had the expectation of x with the uh, Hamiltonian, which gave us uh, i h bar p over m. Uh, but notice here that this is we want what's the opposite order here. So use an anti-symmetry property, and we put a negative there, and that's why we have a negative in the parentheses. Good to go there. Similarly, we solved for h and the commutator of h and p in problem 3.18. And we got that we had a result to IH bar dv dx. So that's why we plugged this in here. So if you want, go make explicit reference to those questions. They are posted. Nonetheless, we can now combine these things. We see both of them have an IH bar. So let's go ahead and factor that out. And you see that we set ourselves up in pretty good position for the expectation value. Since IH bar is a constant, now we can just tidy this up in the next couple steps and see what we get. With the commutator relation now out of the way, uh, the commutator bracket now out of the way, what we can go ahead and do is substitute this in and go ahead and simplify. As I said, getting rid of the IH bar was just a matter of convenience. Cancel that, cancel that. We see that the double I's get a, give us a negative one, which is what we see here. Notice here that linearity comes through once again and I'm able to split up the expectation value. And we see that we get P squared over M and we get the X dv dx and its own expectation value there again all of that has to be multiplied by this negative from the double i's i would like to point out here that i can multiply this expectation value by one again linearity allows me to multiply by constants and push it inside no big deal uh, and by doing so i'm able to put a two in the denominator here and have a two on the outside as we see here we distribute the um uh, yeah, so once we do that, uh, why didn't the 
negative distribute. Uh, so, oh, excuse me, yeah. So we have this negative here that needs to be canceled out with this negative. So that looks like a typo, my apologies. So in, anyway, you have a negative from here and a negative from the double odds that cancel. And we have a two in the denominator now. So we have P squared over two M and that's exactly what we recall was the kinetic term. And then the negative sign just goes from here, distribute over, we get X, DV, DX. So we conclude now that D by DT of the expectation of X and P is equal to twice the kinetic expectation minus X DV DX, where V is the potential, of course. Um, and what we say is that for stationary states, every expectation value is constant in time, stationary states. And so we see that the derivative of a constant is zero. And if this is zero, we simply add this over and thus we prove the theorem that we were looking for. And that should kind of make sense when, you know, we see that our potential, when we, since we're taking a derivative, we need to replace the x coefficient or the uh, x power. And that's what multiplying by x gives us the equal kinetic term. Uh, let's just see how this works in practice. So for the harmonic oscillator that we were worried about, we saw that the V was equal to one half M omega squared X squared. And so what I was rambling on about is the fact that here, when we take the derivative of the potential, the X squared leads a factor of two down. So that cancels this one half and I'm left with M omega squared X. But here I need to multiply by X due to what the theorem tells me. And when I do that, I am left with M omega squared X squared. So I replace the power of X, but the derivative brought down the power of two and bringing down the power of two is what gives me to replacement of the two V. And here, if I have two V, the two goes, uh, thanks to linearity being a constant, I can push it outside. And now I have two of the kinetic term is equal to two of the potential term. The twos cancel, so I'm left with kinetic equal potential. And, you know, we kind of saw this, or I at least alluded to this when we went over the harmonic oscillator sections. And we saw that for regardless of what state it was in the case of 2.11 n equals zero and n equals one, we see that we got an equal contribution from both terms. Being an oscillator, that kind of makes sense. Whatever we lose in kinetic, we make up for in potential and vice versa. Uh, think about a spring. If I compress it, I slow down, but the compression leads to more potential. And so I get this constant trade off. Pretty cool. And then similarly, we have the same result for uh, 2.12 where t is the, the expectation of t was one half n plus one half and so one half integer addition uh h bar omega of course omega oscillator and that's just for all n in the stationary states that we need pretty cool but you know we have kind of saw the writing on the wall when we were dealing with this the first time so thank you for watching and until next time Stay curious. Happy learning.